Stern, what can you tell parents that are, have young kids that are coming out and, you know, they might not accept um, the young, you know, LGBT kids? Uh, I was watching a special about a woman who was very, uh, 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 very uh, uh, unsupportive of her daughter, and they became estranged. And she was very religious. And then one day, she got a phone call that her daughter had killed herself. And that woman said, uh, I, "I can't believe I put anything above my child." So don't put anything above your child. There's a family Bible on the table. I grew up in a home that was very fundamentalist. I was in church whenever the doors were open. I was there for Sunday school on Sunday mornings and church on Sunday night. Everything in the Bible was taken literally and there were rules about everything. We'll I was taught that Catholics were going straight to hell, and then I married one, <laughs> so. I had two daughters by my first husband, Anna and Becky. We lived in Missouri, and it was the typical all-American family in the neighborhood. I think that that upbringing of mine, I definitely passed it on to my daughters. We went to a conservative, Bible-believing church every Sunday. I mean, I think Anna was only about two weeks old when we went to church. Well, my earliest memory of Anna was that she could hum Jesus Loves Me when she was 10 months old. She couldn't talk, but she could hum the tune. The girls, they were like normal siblings. Anna was 11 and Becky was 8 when their dad and I got divorced, and they were nine and 12 when I remarried. When I was growing up, homosexuality was not taught in school. I didn't really study the Bible at all about it, but I did pull out those passages and read them and certainly use them against Anna later. As time went on, there were just so many clues that as I look back, she was trying to, to tell me. Anna loved music, and in high school she did a lot of singing. She was in a lot of musicals in school. And when she was a senior in high school, there was a drama teacher there who was a lesbian, and they became very close. But I did not want to know, and I just dismissed it. It was like I blocked it completely. Anna went away to college and in her freshman year, she wrote us a letter telling us that she was a lesbian. She said that she was never comfortable with men, but now she understood that she was comfortable with women. After going to the bathroom to become physically ill, and then just going completely underground, not telling anybody and being ashamed and embarrassed, I wrote her back and I told her some things in that letter that were not very loving. Undoubtedly, the most difficult part of your letter is the gay thing. I will never accept that in you. I feel it's a terrible waste, besides being spiritually and morally wrong. For a reason I don't quite fathom, I have a harder time dealing with that issue than almost anything in the world. I do and will continue to love you, but I will always hate that. The church I was going to at that time did teach that it was a sin. The six or seven passages in the Bible that talk about it, those were preached on from time to time, and I was clearly in accord with what they were teaching, that it was a sin, and not just a sin, but the sin above all sins. And so I had harsh words for her many times and thought it was a choice, and she needed to just get her act together and stop this. In early 1996, Anna began to withdraw from me. There was no contact on Mother's Day of that year, which was very painful for me. And finally in July, I wrote her a letter and just said, what have I done? Whatever it is, I'd like to make it right. And her letter back to me was maybe even more difficult than her first one. And it basically said that I had done colossal damage to her soul with my shaming words 
that I was her mother biologically only, that she did not want to and did not have to forgive me, that she wanted nothing more to do with me. So when the phone rang at 10 o'clock at night, eight or nine months later, there was a part of me that knew what had happened. Anna had committed suicide by hanging herself from the bar in her closet. She used the chain of her dog's leash and had wrapped it around her neck and stood on a chair, then kicked the chair out from under her. She hung for about 15 hours before anyone found her. And that's the way it ended for Anna and me. She took her life before there was any reconciliation. It took her death to make me really research the topic of homosexuality and what the Bible really says about it. I did my own study of the scriptures and I, I prayed a lot. I can remember lots of times saying, God, are you sure this is what you want me to believe? Are you sure you want me to change my beliefs on this? And then the answer I always got was yes. The teaching I was taught by the church and in my home was that not only was homosexuality an abomination, but that it was also a choice. It was a lifestyle choice. After researching extensively, I began to understand that it isn't a choice. I don't think anybody in their right mind, especially a person who's a Christ follower, would choose something that would invite hatred and misunderstanding and death. What I've learned is that instead of taking the Bible literally, I have to take it in the context and culture of the day in which it was written. I've come to believe differently than the way I was raised, and once you've made that transformation, there's really no going back. And I get affirmation every single day that this is what God wants for me. My daughter is dead because of the untruth I was taught by the church. Teach Ministries is a not-for-profit organization that stands for to educate about the consequences of homophobia. Gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered people are children of God. Just I remember saying to Bob, you know, somehow I don't want her death to be in vain. But I had no idea what that would look like, and I didn't think it would look like this. But I'm very thankful that it does look like this. Now I feel thankful that God has changed my heart, has transformed me into a person who loves unconditionally. And I'm thankful to have hundreds of surrogate gay and lesbian Annas. And it's my greatest joy to love and accept them just as they are. And it, it just feels so good to be able to do for them what I couldn't do for Anna.